Welcome to the Daily Tanya. Today is Wednesday, Chof Ches Nisan, the 28th day of Nisan. Koyach of Nisan, the power of Nisan. Nisan is miracles, the power of miracles. In this day, 20, uh, 32 years ago, the Rebbe spoke the famous sicha, the famous talk that really uh, shook us to the core. And we heard the Rebbe saying, I did everything what I could to bring Mashiach. And I don't know what else to do. And the Rebbe says, from now on, I give it over to you. Tut als was I can't. Do everything you can to bring Mashiach. And we were at a loss. What does the Rebbe want from us? But 32 years passed, and we still don't have Mashiach in a revealed way. And apparently there's some more work that the Rebbe wants us. The Rebbe gives us the koyach nisan, the power of nisan, the power of miracles, the power of being able to transform ourselves to be Mashiach Yidin, to go out of our individual exile and uh, to fulfill Hashem's wish in this world. So it's connected also with this week with today's Tanya. Let's begin the Tanya with Tzedakah. G'day la Tzedakah, Shema Karev, Sagerullah. This is one thing also that brings Mashiach closer, the giving of the Tzedakah. So today we're going to finish chapter 42, where the Alter Rebbe explains how one should serve Hashem with feelings of love and fear of Hashem, and specifically the fear and awe of God. How do we get, how do we achieve this the Alter Rebbe said, we have to picture like the king is standing in front of us. When you're standing in front of a king, the king is watching you. Obviously, you feel this is, the king is there, and you're going to do whatever the king wants. Today, we don't have a concept of a king, but back in the days, a king, the presence of a king would be so overwhelming. And people would be completely subjugated and nullified to the king, saying, you know, the king is here, he can't say a word. So thinking Hashem as the king is watching. So the Alter Rebbe now addresses the question that this is true in the case of a king, when you can see the king. But you say that the same thing, we have to picture and think Hashem seeing God as the king standing, but we don't see God. Physical king, you see. God, you don't see. So the Alter Rebbe is going to explain, he addresses this question. And he's telling us that the truth of the matter is that a king you also don't see, even a physical king. You don't see the king. What do you see? You look at the king, you see the physical body of the king. Uh, the physical body is not what you're afraid of. It's not what, what is the what is the awe-inspiring, the physical body. It is what the king represents, is the kingship. And that is something you don't see. When the king, the king is asleep, for example, you don't have that tremble and fear in front of the king. Yes, you may be afraid that he might wake up, but it's not the body that you are fearful fearful of. It is the it is the the shama of the king, the soul of the king, what the king represents, the power of the king. This is something you don't see with the physical eyes, and yet. You do have the awe in the front, of the front of the physical king because you understand with your mind's eye what the king represents. So the same thing says the Alter Rebbe, that when we contemplate and the greatness of Hashem, when we see the world around us and think that everything is coming from Hashem, especially when we see the stars, the, the, the stars and the sun and the moon, they're all... Even the direction they go, they go in the direction towards the west because this is where the presence of the Shechina is, of the divine, the divine presence. And you see everything when it's nullified to Hashem. Now, then, so this is what you should have in mind to see the king in, in, in the, what you see the, the, the behind, but you see beyond the, the physical world, what this physical world represents. 
So let's see inside what the Alter Rebbe says. Okay. Says the Alter Rebbe. In addition to this, one should remember that as in the case of a mortal king, the fear of him relates mainly to his inner essence and vitality and not to his body because when he's asleep, though his body doesn't change, but there is no fear of him. This is because while he's asleep, his inner essence and vitality are in a state of concealment, clearly then. They are the main reason for fearing the king while he's awake. And surely his inner essence and vitality are not perceived by the physical eyes, but only by the mind's eyes. Through the physical eyes, beholding his body and garments and knowing that his vitality is clothed in them. So this in turn leads to the beholder to fear him, to fear the king. So therefore the same thing says the Alter Rebbe is when we think about Hashem in the same manner. And if this is so, then surely in the analog as well. Not only is the king seeing him, but he is seeing the king as well. And this causes him to fear God. Moreover, says the Alter Rebbe, he must truly likewise fear God when gazing with his physical eyes at the heavens and earth and all their hosts wherein he, he's clothed the infinite light of the blessed Ein Sof that animates them. Hashem animates the entire world. In addition to that, says the Alter Rebbe, in the footnote, that you can also see in the movement of the, the, the sun, the moon, that the movement is towards west, which is where the Shechina is. It says Shechina B'Mayrav. The west, the, the divine presence is in the west. That is why we we daven, we pray to the east, towards Jerusalem, where God, God's presence is there in the in the holy temple. But in the in the, the temple in Jerusalem, the way it went in, you go into the temple, you went from the east towards the west, and the and the western part of the temple was the holiest place. And it is also seen with a glance at the eye, and a glance of the eye, that they are nullified to him, blessed to his blessed light, by the fact that they prostrate themselves every day towards the west at the time of the setting. As the rabbis of blessed memory commented on the verse, and the hosts of the heavens bow down, bow before you, that the Shechina, the divine presence, abides in the West. And therefore, not only do the heavenly hosts show their self-abnegation when they set in the West, but their daily orbit westward is a kind 
of prostration and self-nullification. So I'm constantly in that way. So says Dalta Rebbe, when you take this analogy, a person, even if a person never saw the king, doesn't know what a king looks like, but when you see all the glory, the majestic glory, you see all the ministers in the, in the king's courtyard, everyone bows down and nullified to the king, that itself gives you the feeling of awe of the king. Even he has never seen the king and does not recognize him at all. He says, nevertheless, when he enters the royal court and there the king is not revealed at all, it is not the place of his royal throne and the like. In the royal court, the king is there, but he sees people, the ministers bowing down to him. In the analog, this refers to the physical world in which various proofs are necessary in order to bring about self-nullification to the king. That's what the Rebbe is not. And he sees many eminent noble, eminent nobles, many ministers, nobles, prostrating themselves before, the, before one man. So the person who enters and looks superficially, is unable to detect a difference between him and the other man's presence. That's what the Rebbe notes. It says that the Rebbe doesn't say that they bow down to one king, one man. They don't even realize, don't even see the difference between him and, and others. Nevertheless, when they see everybody else prostrating themselves towards him, there falls on him a dread and awe. And although many garments are involved in this vestiture, so that when one gazes at the created beings, one does not perceive that they are but garments to the divine life force. So the Alter Rebbe says, in that case, we don't see the Shem, and, when, and and we look at the world, we see also physical things. We don't see in a revealed way that this is animated, vitalized by God. Says the Alter Rebbe, the fact that the, this is, comes through garments and is concealed is just like the king. When a king is wearing many, many garments, is still, when you know that a king is there, it doesn't matter how many garments he wears, you still have the, the dread and awe of the king. You know the king is there. There is no different or distinction at all in the fear of the mortal king, whether he be naked or clothed in one or many garments. So it says that the Rebbe. So what we need to do is we need to practice this. We need to exercise this and to habituate ourselves, our minds to think that whatever we see, we should see beyond the physical thing that we see. And that's a daily practice. It says, The essential thing, however, is the training to habituate one's mind and thoughts continuously so that it always remains imprinted in his heart and mind. We have to think and train our way, our mind to think that everything one sees with his eyes, the heavens, the earth, and all they contain constitutes the outer garments of the king. The Holy One, blessed be he. In this way, he will constantly remember their inwardness and vitality, which is godliness. This will create within him a fear of God. 
That's the Dalta Rebbe, that this is really the meaning of emuna. What is emuna? We're saying we have emuna in God. We have, emuna simply means faith, faith in Hashem. But the Alter Rebbe says the word emuna has also another meaning. In Hebrew, we say leita men to practice, to train, to habituate ourselves. The word emuna means the training, the faith. We need to train and habituate ourselves to, to the thoughts that what we see, we should see beyond what we physically see. This is also implicit in the word emuna, faith, which is a term indicating training to which a person habituates himself like a craftsman who trains his hand and so forth. Just like a, an artist. An artist draws beautiful pictures. So he has the, the talent in his, in his hand, in his mind. He has that talent, but he still needs to train himself. If he's not going to practice, if he's not going to train, he's not going to be able to bring out this deep talent, this powerful talent that he has. And the same thing is also with our Ramuna, our faith. We have the faith. It is a natural, in, inborn faith that we have in Hashem. But in order to bring this faith out, we need to practice. We need to practice our mind to think that way, that when we see something, whatever we see becomes transparent and we see something deeper. We see the godliness that animates everything in this world and every step every every event that occurs in our life also we see through we see it through the the lenses of the faith and that is that is this is what it means living a mashiach life connecting with what we started the day of chav ches nisan says that rebbe continue and the gam in addition to this practicing practicing of course takes time but until that point, we need to take upon ourselves. We have the natural um, love to Hashem and to accept Hashem as the, the yoke, accepting Hashem as the king, beyond understanding. There should also be a constant remembrance it is constant because it does not depend on prior contemplation, but rather on pure faith. What should we remember? The dictum of the sages of blessed memory, acceptance of the yoke of the kingdom of heaven, Except, accepting Hashem as king. Which parallels the injunction, you should appoint a king, meaning God, over you, is by, is explained elsewhere, and so on. For God, blessed be, foregoes the creatures of the higher and lower worlds, meaning they are not the ultimate intent of creation, and uniquely bestows his kingdom upon us. He gives us the mitzvahs, us the commandments. And we accept the heavenly yoke. And this is the significance of the obeisances, the bowing down during the prayer of the 18 benedictions, the prayer of the Amida. We bow down. What is the idea of the bowing down, says the Alter Rebbe? This is accepting God as king in action. We accept the king through speech and through thoughts, like Kriya Shema, saying the Shema and so on. But, in, but we get to the point also accepting Hashem in action, whether we understand or not, we are nullifying ourselves to Hashem. Following the verbal acceptance of the yoke of kingdom in heaven, uh, kingdom of heaven in the reading of the Shema, when we say the Lord is our God, the Lord is one, and so on, 
לחזר ולקבל ופועל ממש במייסה וכולו כמו שנסבר במוקם אחר. ובי וואן אקספטס את once again in actual deed and so on. או בי בואינג in the course of the prayer of the Amida, one shows one's acceptance in actual deed of one's self-nullification to God, as explained elsewhere. So like we said, this is a, a perfect lesson to today's uh, message of Chafchas Nisan Kriyach, Nisan, the power of Nisan, that we have the power to completely give us as over whether we see it or not. One of the things people, especially the young people, they say that uh, how can we follow a guide, the Rebbe's guidance that if we don't see the Rebbe physically. So this lesson from Tanya teaches us also that when you, we see the Rebbe, we don't necessarily, obviously we want to see the Rebbe physically in front of our eyes, you're waiting for Mashiach to come, To be, the Rebbe should be revealed to us. But we see the Rebbe nevertheless through his actions, through the miracles that is happening on a daily basis, the guidance, the Rebbe's teachings, and, and transforming the world day after day, step after step. And the Rebbe says, this is in our hands. We are acting as the Rebbe's foot soldiers. Let us hope that very soon we shall be able to complete the mission We are seeing Mashiach very soon in front of our eyes. Amen, Kenny Ratzin. Thank you so much for joining. We'll see you tomorrow, Mesat Hashem.